with Justify Retired Matt, we have a whole new picture in the three-year-old male division. Certainly, uh, Justify will be the champion three-year-old. Certainly, Justify will be the horse of the year. I even saw a few people mention a Monomoy girl as a potential candidate with everything she's done. And as remarkable as her career is in 2018 and could still yet be, uh, I, I don't think there's any doubt that Justify 6 for 6 with a triple crown will end up as the horse of the year. But the second half of the year will be without him. And the second half of the year really, uh, really heats up this weekend, both at the Jersey, store, Jersey Shore and upstate New York. Monmouth Park will uh, host its uh, summertime classic Matt, the Haskells on Sunday. And uh, we very may well have the second best three-year-old male to run this year in good magic. Yeah, this is certainly an opportunity now with the void that Justify is leaving uh, in the three-year-old division. This is certainly a time for several good candidates who are running this weekend to step up and take the leadership of what's left of the three-year-old division. And the Haskell uh, on Sunday has good magic in there. Good magic was the champion two-year-old from 2017. Good magic finished second. Um, in the Kentucky Derby after winning the Bluegrass. Um, I think that the Haskell is Good Magic's race to win. If if we see the that horse who's now cha- trained by Chad Brown put his best on the race course at uh, Monmouth Park. Absolutely, Matt. You know, Good Magic, uh, you know, he, he hasn't run a ton yet in his career. And, and of course, the Chad Brown... Uh, the Eclipse Award winner got his first Eclipse Award last year. Train keeps on a rolling. Uh, he started off gangbusters up in Saratoga. Good magic. Uh, uh, two-year-old champion last year. Decisive winner of the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. And really this year, you know, we saw him there in the bluegrass. Beat a, a, a decent field at Keeneland. He did it in a professional manner. And I can't say a negative thing about his two efforts in the Triple Crown. Very good second. He tried justify at the top of the stretch. He wasn't good enough, but he was good enough to be second of 20 in the Kentucky Derby. And then the Preakness, uh, whether Chad Brown wanted it or not, uh, uh, Jose Ortiz uh, took him uh, right to the throat latch of justify for much of the race. Again, not quite good enough to beat the uh, the undefeated Triple Crown winner, but good magic sure stuck around in that Preakness, eventually finishing fourth, but uh, beaten just about a length. So good magic. Uh, uh, he he's ready to uh, to take over the spot as the best three year old now that Justify is away, and I agree with you. You know he's the favorite, but uh, if he runs his race, he's strictly the one to beat in here, Matt. But there are other good horses, including the horse, one of the horses that passed him late in the Preakness, Bravazo. Uh, D. Wayne Lucas has said that he is doing great, no worse for wear from his busy. Uh, spring campaign, including being the only horse to run against Justify all three times in the Triple Crown, a very good second in the Preakness. And uh, you have the top two from the Ohio Derby, and Corba Leaps and Lone Sailor might both still have something better left uh, left in them uh, as they uh, visit the Jersey Shore. Yeah, Corba Leaps and Lone Sailor might be horses that are getting better. Uh, Corba Leaps, uh, of course, won a, won a close battle down the stretch against Lone Sailor, and uh, before that, Core Beliefs finished second in the Peter Pan at Belmont Park. Uh, Lone Sailor uh, finished uh, eighth in the Kentucky Derby, which was a nice performance, and then fifth in the Preakness. He's trained by Tom Amos, who's never afraid to take a shot in the big races, and and uh, this week, Tom Amos said, hey, the, this, this three-year-old division is wide open, uh, now that Justify is gone and, and he's going to take his shot in there. Yeah, and I don't, I, I don't see why not. Uh, you know, if you say eighth in the Derby, fifth in the Preakness, that might, might not sound great. But uh, he had some traffic trouble and he was running uh, pretty darn well in that Kentucky Derby, in that sloppy Kentucky Derby. And then his fifth in the Preakness, uh, beaten just over two lengths. Uh, so Lone Sailor ran... Uh, sneaky good races in the uh, in the Derby and the Preakness after just missing in the Louisiana Derby. And unfortunately for him and his connections, he just missed again in that good Ohio Derby behind Core Beliefs. Uh, yeah, I, I think Lone Sailor fits with just about anybody in this crop now. And, and he is uh, uh, kind of a uh, wild card in the Haskell. 
Unfortunately uh, for him, I think as a closer, uh, we found out that Promises Fulfilled will not be in the Haskell. He's going to stick with sprinting, which, uh, which lessens the speed uh, quotient in this Haskell. Uh, the other three horses, it's, it looks like a seven-horse field, Matt. Uh, Golden Brown just pulled off a big upset on the turf at Delaware. Roman Union for Kelly Green, Navy Commander. They all look to be horses on the improve, but uh, probably not quite of the level of horses like Good Magic and Bravazo and the Ohio Derby horses. So uh, to me, it's an interesting race. Bravazo, Core Beliefs, Lone Sailor, I think one of them is going to run lights out, and it's up to uh, Good Magic to run his best to win the race. Yeah, um, it's a, it's that opportunity to step up. And, and you know, since the, the Triple Crown races have, have been run, those horses uh, that have come back have not have not fared especially well. So we'll see if uh, Good Magic can break that trend. I think he can because I think he's just that type of uh, quality horse. People are down on the three row crop now, and and I can see why after if I want Triple Crown besides him, who, but I think Good Magic has proven that he is the real deal, and I. Unfortunately, from a betting standpoint, I expect him to win the Haskell as the favorite.